Hello everyone. Welcome to Studio Free Press Matters. I'm Anu Netar and I'm your host for today. During Studio Free Press Matters, we talk about the work that we do with more than 90 local media partners worldwide to promote and defend press freedom and access to reliable information to everyone. More than 14 journalists have been killed this year alone just for doing their job, finding and speaking the truth. Journalists are under immense pressure and press freedom is under attack. To call for worldwide action, Free Press Unlimited is organizing a people's tribunal as part of a project, a safer world for the truth. To speak about this very special event, we have with us Leon Vellums, director of Free Press Unlimited and the founding father of this project. We also have with us Evelyn Vaxtra, senior policy and advocacy officer. Welcome both. Thank, Thank you. you. Leon, let's start with the basics. What is a people's tribunal? So a people's tribunal is an attempt to organize a, in a justice setting um, a court case on an issue that is not taken up by states. And uh, one of the feelings that we have is that not enough is done to prosecute uh, journalist murder. And the People's Tribunal, in our opinion, is a good way to attract more attention and to also showcase that it's possible to organize justice. Um, it's rooted in um, the Vietnam War, actually. Um, in 1968, the Russell Tribunal, which was a predecessor, started by uh, accusing the United States of perpetrating crimes against humanity in uh, Vietnam. And no state, no international tribunal wanted to take up this case. And this is when a people's tribunal started and the U.S. was prosecuted basically for using napalm. So we're trying to work in the same inspiration. No one is doing enough to prosecute journalist killing. So now we organize a people's tribunal. The idea for A Safer World for the Truth and the People's Tribunal started a few years ago. Now we are realizing it with international partners, the Committee to Protect Journalists and Reporters Without Borders. Can you tell us how and why uh, A Safer World for the Truth started? Well, on a personal note, um, I think it was 1995 when for the first time I saw the statistics of journalists that were killed and I was working as a television reporter at the time and uh, I was working at an organization where journalists had been killed in the past and so we did an item about it and I started researching and that is the first time that I found out that actually uh, none of these murders are really truly investigated. So it's been with me my entire life as a reporter I would say but when I started with Free Press Unlimited Um, one of the things we, we focused on was the increased threats that are happening to journalists. And we found out that it's possible to help people who are in need for uh, assistance, protection, etc. But the, the, the root cause, the fact that people are perpetrating crimes, no one is doing enough about that. So that is where the inspiration came. We, we need justice, mm. because only justice can prevent other people from going the same path, killing journalists. That, so, I think we also made uh, kind of an analysis going back uh, a couple of years ago. I think we looked at, you know, we do a lot on personal protection of journalists. We have a, a reporters respond fund where we do emergency support. Then we have a legal fund where we do the, the legal support. Then we were looking at, you know, then you still have a void where, you know, these states still need to act. How do we actually incentivize them to do that? I think that's also where a lot of the thinking yeah. about this came you know, along. And, and we've been trying to uh, raise this issue with states, for example, in the Media Freedom Coalition. And we found out that they are willing to do something about protection. They're willing to do something about legal assistance. But there's a big reluctance to really engage in justice efforts. Mm -hmm. So not enough is done to, uh, to, to help uh, lawyers prosecutors to understand the field of journalists and why they are being targeted for killing. Uh, so there's a lack of attention really at the state level, mm -hmm. which is why we think state need to do more. And, and, and so that was the combination of inspirations. Evelyn, you advocate for the protection of journalists and fre press freedom on a daily basis in your work. 
what do you think the kind of pressure the journalists are under at the moment wow that's a big question because there are many at the moment uh, i'm afraid um i think we've seen since about 2017 that you know before that time uh, most murders of journalists took place in conflict set conflict settings so where a conflict was going on they were you know uh, uh, trying to report on that and then they were uh, became a, a victim after that we've seen that it, it it has become more targeted killings so it's journalists that are covering corruption um, fraud uh, you know uh, organized crime like here in the Netherlands recently with Peter Artefries um, I think that's a very different trend where you see that journalists until then they kind of chose to do the the, the difficult and the and the, the risky job and I think now they inevitably are doing that job and I think that's very um, um, that's a that's a big issue I think that needs to be resolved and um, I think on top of that we see a lot of different um, risks you see the, the the courtroom coming in a couple of years ago so there's a lot of journalists facing slaps strategic lawsuits against public part participation to make it uh, nice and difficult here um, and you see journalists um, uh, are self-censoring because of all of these you know risks and all of these threats they are facing and I think um, there's too much to cover here in in just uh, just one minute but um, yeah it's 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 not very comforting, I think. But the essence is, is that it's targeted, isn't it? It's it's expressly trying to prevent journalists from covering certain exactly. topics. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's is, that is the trend. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And what role does impunity play in this? Um, a big one, I think. I think where you create an atmosphere, a context where uh, crimes are not um, being uh, prosecuted and when there, no justice is served, I think that's, um, yeah, that's, I mean, of course, it's unacceptable, but it also creates a, uh, yeah, a, a surrounding of, I think, insecurity for journalists. I think in, in general for people who speak out and who try to defend rights and, and speak up to, to those in power. So uh, I think that's a huge issue that should be resolved. I think, you know, if I, you were saying, you know, to make it personal, if I think about myself going out you know as a journalist and covering issues of corruption or you know some some big issues that you know others don't want uh, covered uh, i'm not sure if i would do it in a context where these crimes are not perpetrated it's basically a free ride eh? uh, you can get away with it yeah. that is the problem yeah so criminals can get away with it yeah you don't um, feel protected, you're yeah. not safe. Yeah. In the case of Jan Kuczak in, uh, in, in the Czech Republic, uh, you see that uh, a, a murderer was uh, hired for 10 or 20,000 euros to kill him. And uh, it's been massively uh, difficult to, I mean, in this case, the ones who killed uh, the person are behind bars. Mm -hmm. um, That's the same for Peter. But the police, uh, those who so. ordered it. Yeah. Those who ordered it, they go free. Yeah. Look at the case of uh, Jamal Khashoggi, uh, murdered uh, in a consulate, uh, in a diplomatic representation. So the the level of, um, how do you say that? The level of impunity is also, because it's cost-free, mm -hmm. the, the, it becomes more extreme. It becomes more extreme. Yeah. And and this has to stop. We have yeah. to stop the trend. We have to, to bend the curve. Mm -hmm. yeah. Evelyn, uh, you are in touch with policymakers to keep protection of journalists and press freedom high on the agenda. How do you think this project and this event will help you do that? Um, I hope, and I think uh, uh, that will be shown, is that uh, the project shows, like the tribunal will show, the, the, the other cases, the... the settings that will follow after this, uh, I think they will show that justice can be served if you take the time to investigate and to look at, you know, all the evidence that is there, even years along. I mean, if you do it right away, of course, then you're far ahead. But now you look back at these cold cases that haven't been prosecuted well. Um, I think we will show that it's possible to to serve justice and to, to take these cases up and to bend the curve, to bend the trend. And I think that's very important. Leon, on the 2nd of November, on the International Day to End Impunity, the opening hearing of the People's Tribunal will take place. Can you tell us why 
this is important and what is going to happen on that day? So on this day, uh, the prosecutor, um, Almudena Bernabé, he is going an international renowned journalist um, um, with a big experience in uh, in international justice is going to uh, proclaim his accusation uh, and for that he is going to hear witnesses so we have witnesses uh, on how threats to journalists are leading to uh, problems so maria ressa will speak the recent nobel Pri- uh, peace prize winner she will speak about the threats against her, the legal action against her. We have uh, Machu Caruana, the son of Daphne Caruana Galicia, who was killed in Malta. We have people that have witnessed uh, from close hand what it means when a journalist is killed and how that is connected to their profession. So this will make the case. And then afterwards, in the month after that, the team that is working on Safer World for the Truth has been investigating 10 cases of impunity. And so we're going to unpack the findings of these uh, um, these cases, specifically in Sri Lanka, Mexico, um, and Syria. And so the prosecutor is then going to, bit by bit, unpack how impunity takes place and what can be done about it. And the idea is that then in May, the judges, uh, international judges, will come to a conclusion and a verdict on what should happen. So that is more or less the the setup of the of the the second of November. Evelyn, what would be a satisfying result for you to come out of this People's Tribunal? Um, I think um, uh, we hope that the tribunal will create a lot of attention, a lot of people more aware of the the issue of impunity. Um, and I also think you know two of the main issues surrounding the impunity for for crimes against journalists are that the political will is lacking to take up these cases and that the capacity at the uh, judiciary level is too low. Um, I hope that the tribunal will will create the the energy that is needed to create more political will and to also create the political will to create the capacity to take up these cases. I think it's also important. um, We're doing this with the Committee to Protect Journalists and Reporters Without Borders. And... We're doing that because we think it's important to show that people who kill journalists will not get away with it and that we have an international network of solidarity. We want to show to journalists and the families, uh, the relatives that are left behind, uh, that there are people who care. And I think this is very important because one of the inspirations for this uh, Safer World project is also that we see that in many cases where a journalist is killed, is the family members or the direct colleagues who continue to fight their fight. And I think we need to fight with them. This is a very important fight. Thank you for sharing more about this project and the People's Tribunal with us. We wish you good luck with achieving this project. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. Are you interested in knowing more about this project or attending the People's Tribunal in person or online? then please um, visit our website www.freepressunlimited.org. See you next time. Bye.